All right, guys, welcome back. Another exciting economics lecture here. I'm sure you guys are uh, psyched and ready to go. But you know what? You're having a better time than I am right now, I'm sure, watching some bad daytime TV. So guess what? Get over it. So here we go. We've talked about two economic problems so far. We've looked at unemployment and inflation, two of our biggest issues. Before we move on to an, the next one, uh, there's a, an actual curve, a model that we can use that will show the relationship between unemployment and inflation. It's called the Phillips curve. This is what we're going to be talking about for a couple of days here. It's not the most exciting model in the world, but the College Board loves to ask it, so we got to know about it. So what the Phillips curve does is it shows that there is a relationship between unemployment and inflation. And in fact, that relationship is an inverse relationship. When one goes up in the short run, the other will go down. So think about it. If the unemployment rate was very low, it would mean people were working, uh, they're making money, they're confident, wages might start to go up. And if that happens, people are going to be spending money, and that's going to drive up. It's going to cause demand pull inflation. So low levels of unemployment... Okay, unemployment's low, it means that people are spending and that inflation rate would be high. And the exact opposite would be the case. When unemployment rates are high, okay, we know people are out of work, they're not earning, they're pessimistic, wages might fall, uh, and that's going to cause inflation rates to fall, okay, as people are not going to spend money. So low unemployment usually is coupled with high inflation and vice versa, and that's what the Phillips curve shows. So if we come down here, we look at point B. At point B, we have 3% unemployment. But over here, it's coupled with higher inflation at 6%. Now, if the unemployment rate began to rise, you can see that we would have 5% unemployment, but now we only have 2% inflation. And we connect the points there, and what we have is a Phillips curve. We label that SRPC. That's called the short-run Phillips curve, and it shows that inverse relationship. You can see that the Phillips curve can actually sink below the x-axis. You'll have unemployment that would get to a certain level where you would actually have deflation along with it. All right, now, you can put this model together with uh, our ASAD model. If we said point A coincided with this point A, and we said that here the unemployment rate was 5 and the inflation rate was 2. Well, we know that if we had a positive AD shock, okay, let's say the stock market does well, there's an increase in wealth, AD goes to the right, we know that price level would rise, we'd have inflation, we know that output would rise, so we would have lower unemployment, and that coincides over here with point B. Where now we might say we have, what do we say, 3% unemployment and 6% inflation. So AD moves to the right, it's going to cause uh, higher inflation and lower unemployment, which means that our point of operation on our Phillips curve is actually going to move to demonstrate that. So you can see it's kind of an easy thing to remember. If the AD curve moves, okay, if the AD curve moves, the point of operation on the Phillips curve would move in the opposite direction. AD moved right, the point of operation there moved left. The opposite would be true if we came over here and we had like an AD2 situation and we labeled that point C, you would see that, okay, now our, our output has fallen, which means our unemployment has risen, and our price levels have fallen. So higher unemployment co co uh, corresponds with lower inflation. So if that point moves left, point C, okay, or that curve moves left, point C, the point over here would move right. We could show higher unemployment and lower inflation. So again, the AD curve moves on our ASAD model. The point of operation on the Phillips curve moves in the opposite direction. What if the SRAS curve shifts? Well, that's a whole different scenario, because if we think about it here, let's say there's some kind of SRAS shock, a, a change, a, a rise in commodity prices, a rise in nominal wages. Well, let's say here we're at point A, and we'll say that that point A corresponds with this point A. So it looks like here we have about 3% unemployment and about 2% inflation, but bam, oil prices go up, okay, and that causes a negative SRAS shock, right? And now we're at point B. Well, look what happens. We have negative SRAS. We have that cost push situation. Uh, what we have is rising price levels, but we also have rising unemployment with that falling output. You can't show that on the Phillips curve. What must have happened is that Phillips curve must have moved. The only way that both of these uh, 
Inflation and unemployment can change at the same time is if the whole Phillips curve shifted. In this case, it's going to shift right to SRPC2. And remember, we said we had rising inflation at point B. And at the same time, we had lower output, so rising unemployment, we'll call that 5-2. Okay, so again, easy way to remember it. When the SRAS curve moves, the SRPC curve moves in the opposite direction. SRAS moved left, SRPC moved right. The other way would be true too. So, you know, easy way to remember it. When the AD curve moves, the point of operation moves in the opposite direction. When the SRAS curve moves, the SRPC curve, connect those together, SRAS, SRPC, they both move, but in the opposite direction. Always opposite direction, okay? I think it makes it easy, hopefully it makes that easy for you to remember. Now, we know that in the long run, inflation really doesn't matter. Remember, we talked about how if in 10 years I told you prices were going to be up 50%, that probably wouldn't concern you because you expect there to be inflation over 10 years. You would expect your wages to go up at the same time. So that would mean that in the short run, yeah, when there's a change in inflation, there's going to be a change in unemployment. But in the long run, a change of inflation really shouldn't impact the economy because it's expected. So that means that while we have a short, if you probably figured it out, if we had an SRPC, we're going to have an LRPC. That's called the long run Phillips curve. And it has to do with the fact, and we talked about this earlier, that we expect there to be inflation in the long run. We know what's going to happen because it always happens, and we build it in. And our expectations, they're based on the past. If we expect there to be 3% inflation, well, why do we expect that? Well, because there was 3% inflation the year before, and 29 the year before that, and 3.1 the year before that. Okay, we expect there to be 3%. What that means is businesses build that in. Okay? Businesses will raise prices 3% every year because they expect that the price of all their commodities are going to go up and all their intermediate goods are going to go up by 3%. And employees, okay, they will build into their contracts that 3% raise. When they have their performance review, they will ask for at least that much uh, cost of living increase because they expect that everything they're going to buy has gone up 3%. So we know that if we expect there to be inflation, and there is that level of inflation, uh, the impact is negligible because it's been built into everything. So expectations, what people think or expect the inflation rate will be in the future, that's what that means. Businesses and workers and banks and us and everybody, we try to predict uh, what that inflation rate's going to be because that helps uh, businesses maximize their profitability. It helps banks maximize their, their interest. It helps all of us. So if businesses expect 5% inflation, then they will raise their prices by 5% every year. And, and the point is, is if you expect there to be a certain level of inflation, and everybody expects that, and there is that level of inflation, it's really negligible. Because as we said, if you prices go up by a certain level, but everything else, wages go up by that same level. Who cares? Purchasing power has not changed. Okay, so here's what our uh, LR, our long run Phillips curve looks like. It looks uh, exactly like the uh, long run aggregate supply curve. Uh, we still, same thing, inflation, whoop, unemployment on our axes. This time the LRPC curve is just going to be a vertical line because it's basically telling us that in the long run, a rise in inflation will have no impact on the unemployment rate because if we have that expected inflation rate then there's no reason for firms to lay workers off if that expected inflation rate happens okay it's when the uh, the inflation rate is unanticipated it's when that is when it becomes a problem okay when and it could be either way if the inflation rate is higher than what we thought it would be or lower than what we thought it would be, that's when problems occur. Now, one thing that's important to note, just like our LRAS curve hits the x-axis at the uh, natural rate of unemployment, our LRPC curve also hits the x-axis at the natural rate of unemployment. Basically, what this curve is saying is that if our economy is producing to our full potential, at the natural rate, in the long run, changes in inflation, because they're expected, will not impact the unemployment rate. We also sometimes call that the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment, basically meaning if we're at that unemployment rate, in the long run, inflation will not accelerate if we can stay there. So 
I'm going to draw a short run Phillips curve onto this madness here, SRPC. Where these two curves intersect, we'll call that point A. Over here, that would be our expected rate of inflation. Okay, so what you can say is that an economy, and, and this shouldn't shock anyone, this is basically the same thing that you're showing on an ASAD model. An economy is at long-run equilibrium when our unemployment rate is at that natural rate, remember frictional plus structural, and our inflation rate is what we expect there to be. Okay? It's when that inflation rate is unexpected that the problems occur. Okay? Let's say that we expected this inflation rate to be 3%. If it was 3%, we would stay at that natural rate of unemployment. But if one year that inflation rate fell uh, to 2%, well, what would happen is now we're no longer on the LRPC, now we're on the SRPC. And now you can see that that unemployment rate is higher than the natural rate. Low inflation, high unemployment. If the next year we went back to 3% inflation, well, then we would be right back there at our equilibrium. If after that we went to 4% inflation, well, we know at that higher rate of inflation, now we're going to have a lower rate of unemployment. So in conclusion there, as long as we're at our natural rate and expected rate, we're in long-run equilibrium. When the inflation is lower, or the unemployment is higher than expected, uh, vice versa, that's when we begin to have issues. So we're trying to keep ourselves at that long run. Okay? So you can read through this on your own. Uh, you can kind of take a look at uh, you know the, the impact of inflation and all that. So why is this important? Well, Let's say that we have an economy that's at point A. Let's say that the natural rate of unemployment is 6%, okay, which is high, but let's say that's where it is. And let's say that uh, our expected inflation is over here, you know, less than 1%, which is low, but that's what the economy's at, so, so be it. Now, let's say we have a president, we have a Congress that decide that they want to take, like, fiscal policy actions to try to hire more people. Uh, and they're going to spend money, and they're going to try to lower that unemployment rate to 4%, which they did. But, you know, what happens is, okay, at that 4% unemployment, we're going to have accelerating inflation. Okay? Now we're at point B, and the inflation rate is yeah, somewhere around 3%. Okay? Well, you know, that's higher inflation than we've had. That's going to put a strain on people. But eventually what's going to happen is you know, after a year or two, three years, they're going to start to expect there to be that 3% inflation. And when they begin to expect that inflation, it's going to become the new normal. And what's going to happen at that point, you know, uh, is that our SRPC will shift to the right and bring us back to our new normal there at point C, but now the unemployment rate has gone right back to the natural rate. That's what it always tries to do is go back to the natural rate. Well, if the government is, is, is bent on keeping that unemployment rate at 4%, well, then what they might do is more fiscal policy, spend more money, lower that unemployment rate back to 4%. But then what you have is over 6% inflation because of that lower unemployment and all that spending and that debt that's being incurred. And when that occurs, you know, that'll go on, and eventually that inflation rate will become expected, and our RPC will shift again to the right, and look, now we have that higher level of expected inflation, but our unemployment rate is still right back at 6%. Moral of the story there is uh, the economy is naturally trying to be at whatever our natural rate of unemployment and our expected inflation is. And if you try to, to force it into another scenario, it will eventually work its way back to that equilibrium. And if the government continued to spend money to keep that unemployment rate artificially low, what you could have is eventually accelerating inflation as that SRPC curve will just continually shift to the right with those changing expectations. Okay, I know that's a little bit complicated. We're going to practice over the next two classes a lot of different scenarios with this Phillips curve, and I think you guys will feel a lot more confident with it. You have some homework tonight uh, that you're going to work on. Next class, uh, you have an, an article with some questions you're going to do. And then the class after that, I have a, a bunch of old AP questions that you're going to do. I'm going to do a lot with this Phillips curve because every year it shows up as a, a major ask point on that AP exam. So uh, discuss with your class if you have questions and get to work.